evening i have just been to see a disappointing film <laughs> which is gonna happen from time to time you can't win them all i've just been to see ethan cohen's new film drive away dolls and i knew the reviews weren't great but i went in with an open mind as i always do and i wanted to enjoy it and i didn't really um why didn't I like it? I tell you what, it was mercifully short. Hour and 24 minutes. Win. Films are never that short anymore. So that was a bonus. Um, the story is about two women played by Margaret Qualey and Geraldine Viswanathan. Apologies if I've got her name wrong. Um, they are friends jamie and marion and they find themselves on a road trip to tallahassee in florida jamie has just broken up with her long-term girlfriend suki played by um beanie feldstein and um marion is just looking for a change of scenery and she wants to go and visit her aunt and when jamie's relationship implodes through her own fault um she decides that her and Marion will take this road trip together and there's such a thing as doing a drive away whereby you go to a car hire place you find out somewhere that a car needs to be delivered and you do the drive so like a hire car thing but it's mutually beneficial I think was the gist um so they pop along to their local um, driveway place and they say they want to go to Tallahassee. Moments before, um, Curly, who runs the um, driveway place, has had a phone call from clearly shady people about the delivery being made to Tallahassee. He gets confused and gives the women the car. And they're not supposed to get the car because there's something else in the car. So that's the, that's the premise. The film opens with a very brutal OTT murder and it's almost Tarantino-esque in its violence. Although I guess to be fair, as I said, this is Ethan Cohen's new film. Noticeably, the absence of his, notice, I should say not noticeably, notice the absence of his brother Joel. I don't know who does what within the Cohen pairing, but they are responsible for some of the best, most, uh, they have a very particular style and they make incredibly unique films. And one of their earlier films, Fargo, is, uh, in my opinion, an absolute classic. Um, I believe one of the Coens, possibly Ethan, maybe Joel, is married to Frances McDormand, who was the lead in Fargo. Um, and yeah, they've made things like No Country for Old Men and Burn After Reading and The Man Who Wasn't There, is that what it was called? They've had some hits, they've had some misses, but like normally when they're on form, oh, they remade The Lady Killers, that was terrible. But when they're on form, they're, you know, there's no one else like them. And obviously Fargo is in, in moments quite violent. So it opens with this really brutal murder of this chap um, who you don't know what's going on, but he is murdered. And then we cut to the women. And here is one of my initial problems. I cannot believe for a second that the characters of Jamie and Marion would be friends. They are so different. Um, Jamie is a Texan. Oh, worth pointing out, they're both lesbians. Um that's quite a core part of the story is their um lesbianness and um yeah it's kind of i mean i don't want to say ram down your throat because that's it's inappropriate but the fact that they're queer forms quite a core part of the story um so like i say jamie's just split up with her girlfriend suki um marion on the other hand hasn't had any um action relationships or otherwise for a number of years I, I just don't buy the two of them as friends jamie is like i say she's from texas and obviously you don't want to be and this the film is set in 1999 you don't want to be queer in texas probably even now let alone in 99 so straight away 
she's obviously kind of enjoying i forget where they start philadelphia is where the film starts um she's enjoying her freedom and being able to live um authentically but i just she's so outspoken and in your face and marion is so buttoned up and i get that opposites attract in friendships but i'm just thinking like i don't get these two as friends um but anyway we're supposed to buy that and then they set off on this road trip and i i can see exactly what the film was trying to do but it just feels like coen brothers light l-i-t-e like the diet coke of coen brothers it's the elements of a coen brothers film are there it just something was missing and i don't know if the thing that's missing was joel cohen i don't know what extra the other one brings i don't know who does what in that pairing but like i say when they're on form they're superb and this was just it just didn't work for me um like i say it was it was very um graphic in places and fair enough it's a 15 certificate film the sort of henchmen i didn't care about them particularly um and again i get what they wanted to do with those two characters the sort of goons but they weren't they were all right but they didn't really sort of pop for me the guy in charge of the goons who's working for the overall boss um is the actor um colman dingo is that the guy's name he was in the color purple and he's in a lot of things and he's cool as f i liked him he was all right um the goons just didn't really do a huge amount for me um and yeah it was supposed to be this sort of road trippy crime caper hijinks ensue but it just kind of was so formulaic and like a to b via some lesbians and i just just didn't care and like i'm watching it thinking i totally understand why it's got like two star reviews i just i wanted to go in and go do you know what? it's short and maybe it'll be pithy and like punchy and a bit different and a bit screwball because the coens do that sort of stuff really well and then i'm just sitting there going yeah just I'm, it's just not working for me um and then a bit of a matt damon cameo at the end and i love matt damon and the coen brothers love matt damon and that should have elevated a bit for me but by that point i was just like oh is it over yet um i like the two leads although i found the margaret Qualey character i didn't like the way she spoke it was very sort of almost deliberately coen brothers like dialogue and she had the strong texan accent that wasn't the problem it was just the way she spoke i found really irritating and then the way marion spoke was very sort of like i say buttoned up um and i guess they kind of needed to balance each other, balance each other out and that jamie needed to like calm down a bit and be a bit more sensible and marion needed to let her hair down a bit and maybe that's what they were trying to do with the characters but it just fell flat for me really disappointing like not, not really disappointing because it's not one i was mega excited to see but i'd seen the trailers and it looked fun and it actually wasn't a huge amount of fun but say lovey you can't win them all like i say mercifully short and now i can go home hooray um until next time film fans katie out